So I got a new hat. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Elliot video. It's me, Elliot is a cool guy, the, that funny graphic design kid on TikTok, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, whatever you think, I'm on it, baby, we're on everything. And we're, and we're doing some more graphic design today. Um, I moved apartments, that's pretty cool. Look at this new stuff, Everywhere looks, everything looks different. And also I'm wearing a hat because my hair is long and it looks horrible. So we'll go put the hat back on. A lot has changed, but a lot has stayed the same, okay? What has changed? Everything. What has, st st what has stayed the same? Uh, unreliable video schedule. Uh-oh. Not my fault. Not my fault. Moving. It's moving's fault. I apologize for the lack of videos, but it's okay. I'm back, and we're gonna get right back into it with a banger of a video this week. That's right. You wanted it. No, well, I wanted it, and I'm making it, and it's happening. Today, we're going to be designing for my Animal Crossing villages. Before we get into the video, I just want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we are nearly at 20,000 subscribers. Oh my god, 20,000 people. That could fill a big area. Um, so, a lot of you who watch these videos aren't subscribed, so if you want to smash that button, then please do. Uh, and also feel free to like the video and comment down below who your favorite villager is uh, and which villager you would like to see designed for. How good is that Animal Crossing update? Oh my god. Now, I was a big player, okay? I was a big Animal Crossing player back, like, last year when it first came out. But since I live in Australia in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, I had to endure winter when I was playing. And I think the three-month period of winter in Animal Crossing feels like about two years. Uh, and it really just drains you from any energy you have of playing Animal Crossing when it's just snow everywhere. So I'm back into it. Uh, I love the update so much, in fact, that I actually restarted my island. That's right, I wiped the whole thing. It's the third time that I've wiped it, fun fact, because I got a new Switch and all this kind of stuff happened where you had to wipe it because I've got a twin brother, I couldn't keep the same, I don't know, it was a bit of a joke. But this is the third time I've restarted, which means I can get some amazing new villages, uh, as well as some absolutely horrible villagers who have taken residence on my island, uh, like Elise the monkey, who I just can't seem to get rid of, uh, no matter what I do. I've been playing it for about two weeks and I'm already stuck with Elise. Oh, yes, please. But seriously, the update is fantastic. I'm thoroughly enjoying the game. Uh, I think it really, there's, there's like a connection between graphic designers, artists, and Animal Crossing, I think. It's like innately creative, and I think people really, you know, find a nice home there on Animal Crossing. So it was really refreshing to get back into it. Uh, and I've been actually playing a lot of it on stream, which has been a lot of fun too. So uh, the whole journey's been documented, everyone. I've been, I've got a lot of, plenty of clips that we can play in this video, you know, to show my true Animal Crossing experience. I got my sticks just in case I need to kill a villager that I don't like. Take me, take me, get it over with. I am currently indifferent about this lion. No. Now, back in the old days when I used to post uh, on Instagram more frequently, um, I love doing like business card size designs, right? And I do them for my viewers on my Twitch streams, I do them for my Patreons on my Patreons on my Patreon. Uh, and I just love doing like business card layout designs. So I figured it wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun if we did these business card things, but for villages, like for imaginary villages, specifically villages that inhabit my island. Uh, so that's the idea we're running with today. And I think it could be a nice little spin. So it's a little something different. Please tell me if this is something you want to see more of, because this is something I want to make more of. So hopefully we have the same opinion on this. And if we don't, I'm still going to make them. Confidence in the content. All right. So the all important question is who are the villagers I'm going to be designing for today? So I figured I'd choose my own villagers, of course, because they're the ones I have the closest heartfelt relationship with. At the point of recording this video, I have 10 villagers. They are Bam, Myra, Poncho, Audie, Midge, Eric, Rosie, Elise, Kyle, and Claude. A whole bloody mix of characters there. I like two of them, honestly. Oh, maybe like five. A lot of them, a lot of them needs to rotate. Like, uh, early days of the Animal Crossing game, okay? I want to do three designs today. And the villagers that I'm going to be designing for from these cast of characters around me are going to be Midge, Eric, and Flora, who I don't have on my island, but one day I will. 
because she has the same birthday as me. That's, uh, now you know my birthday, I guess, if you were to look, look into it. Midge, Eric, Flora, the big three, that's who we're going to be designing for today. All three of them have a special place in my heart. All three of them have a special place in my island with Eric and Midge having their own houses and Flora having a flamingo that represents Flora that is currently on the island waiting for her to come. So let's get right into it and let's make Midge something special. So we're going to start with this image I took of Midge the other day. Uh, now, Midge isn't the most loved villager in the game. Midge is actually pretty low on the popularity list that I checked recently. Not that I think the popularity list is too important, uh, because I think it's very subjective, you know, which villagers you like and which ones you don't like. Uh, but Midge is up there, like, greatest of all time for me. You're probably wondering why, Elliot. What is so, what is so good about this silly, silly little bird? Uh, well, I think Midge, the name, is quite funny for a bird like this, quite a normal personality type bird. Uh, and also very sweet design, love the little swirly cheeks. Uh, and Midge just has very nice reactions, you know. Sometimes she'll be reading and her mouth just opens. It's, it's very funny. Um, I really think it's quite funny. Uh, so this is the image that we're going to be using to, for this design. We're going to be using an image of sweet Midge reading a book. First thing that I want to do is I think I want to do some sort of like rounded rectangle thing going on here. Um, I might make one just like around this size. Curve off the edges a little bit. Uh, and I'll have no stroke on this one as well, just because I want it to be like a nice flat thing. Um, I'm then going to do a little clipping mask by holding Alt and clicking in between the two layers there. Uh, and then we can just Command T, uh, Control T rather, and just kind of put Midge into place here. Uh, I just think the rounded rectangles just gives it a, a, just a real nice little frame, you know. Um, very sweet, much like much like Midge herself, you know. Um, this photo is also very cute because uh, Midge happened to be sitting in between these two trees here, which I thought was quite funny as well. These two trees that I accidentally planted right next to each other. And she just sat right in between the both of them, which is just the, the, the sweetest little thing. And then I might just fill in the background here uh, with a nice kind of light creamy color. Now, when it comes to the text of my posts, I usually do graphic design, funny stuff. That's what you guys will be used to from me. Very like, you know, oh, funny client. Uh-oh, uh-oh, graphic designer said no more work today. Uh-oh, that's funny. Um, so this one's going to be obviously quite different. And I want these to be like love letters to these villagers, you know, um, little like postcards almost. Uh, not necessarily like a business card in the traditional sense, but just in the, the kind of style of like an identity of a villager on a card. Um, so what I'll be writing for this one is a very simple bit of text, which I think will just say, I love Midge. That's as creative as it gets right there, everyone. That's a uh, full creativity swinging right at you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring out the paintbrush tool for a little bit. Uh, and let me draw, let, let me show you my true artistry. This is what I'm kind of thinking. So I'm thinking like, I like love, you know, like up here and then like, you know, the, the cursive midge uh, down there. Right. And then, and then we can have like a little, like a little block of text at the bottom right here. And I think that would frame it nicely. We could even cut out like a circle here, like a little area of space and then do like my little symbol or something too. That could be cute. Do you see what I mean here? Do you see the, do you see the idea? You do? Let's do it then. So let's get typing. Um, I think we'll use a nice Nautica for Midge here. I think we'll try and get Midge going first. We'll drag that to the top of the layers. Uh, there we go. That's kind of looking kind of nice. Nautica, of course, is an Adobe font. So if you have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud, you can use this one as annoying as that may be that you have to have a subscription to use it. But I'm sure there are other ways of getting this font as well. Um, so that's kind of like a nice font for Midge. I think that sums up Midge's personality there. I love using Nautica, as you all might know already. Um, but let's kind of mix this up a little bit. I want this to go like on top of here as well as this white area too. I'm kind of thinking like, so we're gonna take the font here. I might change it to a slightly different color. Uh, I'm thinking maybe matching the pink of Midge might be quite sweet. And then maybe if we just go into our blending options, add a little stroke here, just using that outside layer, make it a little bit bigger too. Um, we might be able to get some sort of, uh, that kind of looks, yeah, that kind of looks pretty, that definitely looks interesting. 
So let's just give that a crack really quickly if we kind of chuck that in here. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, uh, uh, you know what I mean? That's not really super nice. So let me have a quick play around and see if there's anything that I can come up with here for this midge type. So what you might have noticed that I did here is I just added a cheeky little drop shadow after a bunch of umming and ahhing about the color and about, you know, adding a stroke to it or anything. Uh, I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this on Adobe Illustrator. You'll probably comment that as well, uh, but that's okay. This is what we're doing. Uh, and I've added a little bit of noise to that shadow as well, just so we get a little bit of a, a, little bit of a crunch too. Another thing that I noticed is that Midge has the little swirly cheeks, right? And the swirliness of the M um, works really well there. And I'm thinking if we potentially kind of like get this going behind Midge, you know what I mean? So like we have like some sort of layering there, that could be pretty cool. Um, so I'm in a little bit of a, I'm not in a rush, but you know, I am filming a video, so I don't want to take this all day. So I, instead of doing some fancy little masking thing or anything like that, I mean, I'm not, I don't really know how to mask anyway. Um, I'm just going to kind of go around and uh, and just like, you know, really dodgy, do a, do a real dodgy little eraser tool here. Um, and you know what, at a distance, this isn't gonna see the light of day up apart from, the, uh, maybe it will see the light of day outside of this video, you never know. Maybe I'll be bold and post this on Instagram, lose a whole bunch of followers, regret everything, and then just like delete my entire page and then become an Animal Crossing streamer. Honestly, honestly, doesn't sound bad, but I might do that. Um, but let's kind of, oh, it could look good if maybe just the, maybe just that top one kind of going around the back could be cute there. So it just kind of curls around, but let's try this anyway. Um, so let's just give it a real dodgy little, you know, real, real little, just whatever kind of thing there going around her face. And that looks pretty clean, but I like it more when it's kind of like curving around like that. I think that's quite, quite cute. Um, I might go through and edit this image a little bit more. We might just bump up the saturation a bit, just to give it a little bit of, a little bit more color than what it, we had before. Uh, we'll go into our exposure settings, do a little thing that I like doing, which is this little bit of uh, exposure, give it a little bit of exposure, quite a bit of offset so it's nice and faded. And then you go in and you correct the gamma by going in the gamma correction, would you believe? Uh, and then that kind of just softens the blacks, I find. So it like gives it like a nice little like a faded kind of look to it, which is usually perfect for going in and adding some noise. Uh, if you were doing this uh, from scratch, I would say make the image a smart object first, unlike what I've done, so you can go back and make edits later on. We are stuck with this image. I don't mind, but it's just something to consider in the future. Now we can add a little bit of our assisting text. So we've got this pinky color now here and we can kind of add just a nice little kind of serif, I think. Now I've been recommended this new font before by a brilliant, uh, a, if, if I can remember the name of the font, uh, Tenon, that is the name of the font. Um, one and only Burr's Letters, which is an Instagram account that you 100% should be following, recommended this to me on stream. And I was like, what the hell is Tenon? And then I tried out Tenon and I was like, oh my God, this is a really nice font available on Adobe Fonts once again, if you're looking to get your hands on it, but it's just a nice, simple, like uh, sans serif with a little bit of a, like a little bit of personality to it, which I think makes it really quite nice. Let's just kind of put that down here, make it just a full capitals, shrink it a lot, align it with the bottom there. Uh, and what we'll write here is just, we'll do a, uh, a nice little bit of text, perhaps, like something like the sweetest villager. The, the, the sweetest villager. Um, imagine this is like a like a love letter, you know, there's like poetic music playing as I write this, this, this notes to Midge. The sweetest villager I ever did see. Underrated by all, appreciated by me. How about that, eh? Oh, ho, ho, ho. This is why I took improv classes for almost all of my life. So I've just gone and made some cheeky edits. As you can see here, a few things have changed just because that's what I kind of felt like. Uh, I made the text a little bit bolder and bigger so it didn't feel as kind of like unnatural just sitting there on the side for a little bit. Uh, and I just think it kind of shapes with the, the D kind of coming up there as well. It just looks like it fits into the design more and it's also a bit bolder. It's the first thing that you kind of send your eyes to if it's a bit of a bolder text so it makes it seem like I love Midge rather than Midge I love. 
both kind of read well, but I just wanted to be a bit clearer. Um, I chucked the little text in a bubble here too and added a few more bubbles just to shape the design a little bit better and go with that kind of rounded rectangle motif that I was rocking with before. Um, and I think the only other thing that I might want to add uh, is I do love doing this actually. If we go into a new layer and we clipping mask this layer here and we just fill in this with the pink here, um, we can play around the blending modes and see if anything kind of comes to mind. So this darker color here is a bit extreme, right? It's definitely a bit extreme. But what we can do is just keep it maybe to like the leaves, for example, right? We can just kind of keep that hanging up there or maybe just the parts of green in general. So what I'll do is I'll go into select, I'll go into color range and I'll choose just one of those greens. That gives us like kind of a good idea of what we're gonna see here. Uh, we can now go into this layer and we can do control C, control V, copy and paste that green up there. Um, and now we have like a nice kind of like pinky tinge going on and it's quite noisy too, considering we already added some noise to this here. Um, and that's just nothing too special, but it just gives it like a nice kind of, it, it makes it feel like it's all part of the same image. So this is pretty much done from what I'm thinking. Um, I'm wondering if I can add my signature shape to this design in some way. Um, and I think if I maybe just go make it fully cream, no stroke, rasterize it because it'll transform if I don't rasterize it to a different shape because it's a Photoshop glitch. Funny, fun fact. Um, if I just kind of chuck it in the corner here, either in the top left or the, maybe the top left would look better there. Uh, just so we can kind of pair those up together. And I think, I think that turned out pretty sick. I think that's our first design done. I'm actually really happy with this. It's one of three. Awesome. Let me mock it up. Boom, just like that. Pretty sick. So next on our list of villagers is the one and only Eric. Now, Eric is a very popular villager. People seem to really like Eric. Uh, and I wasn't like looking for Eric, like necessarily like seeking him out. Um, I actually stumbled onto Eric on a uh, island while I was looking for my first kind of three island villages um, during a game of uh, Villager Roulette, which is this thing I do on my Twitch stream, which you can essentially bet like imaginary channel points they're called on Twitch uh, on whether or not I would like or dislike the villager, which is a very simple concept, but uh, was actually a lot of fun. So make sure you bloody follow my Twitch stream if you want to join in on the next villager roulette. Whoa, pretty cool. Um, so he's a reindeer, a very sweet, lazy personality, just a chill, good time loving guy. Um, and this is the photo that I took of Eric the other day um, using that beautiful new fisheye camera. Um, and I think it just really made him like, look pretty sick. And I think there's some things we can do on this, especially with the circular nature of the image. So the first thing we'll do, we'll focus on the image at hand. Um, I'm just gonna grab a nice big ellipse and kind of put it in the middle of the, uh, the file here. By the way, this is a 3,500 by 2,000 pixel file, uh, which is the ratio of a business card, would you believe? 3.5 by two, I think. Um, but we're just gonna do a little clipping mask once again on this guy here. We're gonna zoom in a little bit and just see if we can get those features perfectly kind of put into that circle. See if we can get that head kind of like fish eye going around. And there we go, right? So we have our own little Eric marble here. I've taught you how to make gradient orbs before in the past on this channel. And now I am teaching you how to make an Eric orb. Now I think Eric has quite a different vibe to Midge. Obviously Eric's a bit more of a funny kind of guy. So I think we should go with a bit more of a cartoony bold color kind of approach to this. So I've added a nice little stroke around the circle, added a little bit of a thicker stroke as well uh, on the bottom right here, just by duplicating the image, moving it a little bit to the bottom right, um, which just gives it a little bit of a, a funny little flavor. Now we can work with the image itself. Uh, and what we might do once again is pick a color that we can use. And I think like a nice golden yellow could work well here. Chuck that over the top there. And we're gonna look for a nice little uh, blending mode as well. Uh, once again, the darker color is kind of coming to mind here. I think we get some pretty cool looking effects and I might just kind of go through and erase the the, uh, the eyes a little bit just because those are a bit extreme. Um, and that looks a bit, that looks a bit creepy, but I think if we give it some noise, it might look okay. I think the, the, the personality of Eric is still shining through and I think that's important. Uh, we'll add some noise to that, which kind of softens it once again. We might even go through, let's try something out here. Let's duplicate that layer. 
Uh, let's go into blur. We'll go into our Gaussian blur and we'll just give it a little bit of blur just like that. Just so it goes over the edges a little bit and you can see that that layer on the, the, the bottom is kind of shining through with that sharp black edge. Um, so when it goes over the top like this, it gives it like a cool glossy glass effect. But what if we just go in and add some noise just to soften it all? See, that's kind of cool to me. I really like how that kind of, that kind of goes on there. We'll just give it a quick little try once again, see if I can get any blending modes to work. Um, I think the hard light is kind of working the best right now. It gives it a little bit of a shadow. Um, it's just kind of, uh, kind of a lot at the moment. So we'll merge those two together. We'll go into our adjustments, go into saturation and just desaturate this thing a little bit. Just desaturate it a little bit. Change the hue a little bit as well. There we go. A nice little warmer kind of shade might work best. And we can finally go into our exposure settings uh, and just bring it down a little bit and then give it a nice little glossy fade. Bring it up a little bit. We're just playing around. We're just experimenting. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. That looks good. There we go. There's our little Eric, there's our little Eric orb right here, which is a, a bit of fun. So the font that I've gone with for Eric is a font called Fixture, which is a really cool font by Sudtipos. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, I hope. Uh, but it's one of the first fonts that I ever actually bought. And the reason that I bought it is because there are a ridiculous amount of weights for this font going from condensed to like expanded to regular to italic. And my favorite, which is Fixture Ultra, right? Which is like a whole bunch of like different weights of like going from like the smallest to the thickest kind of like font. You know what I mean? Like, look at this is unreal. Yeah. Wow. God, I love fonts. Um, and we're going with the Fixture Ultra Medium weight here. Uh, and then we can chuck the Eric marble over the top of it and it just fits it quite nicely and it shapes it well. Um, now the Eric kind of looks like Eri here. The H and the K look a bit similar with this type, but I don't really care. Uh, if you know your Animal Crossing, you will know that this is Eric. If you think it's Eri, well, you better get the game and you better start island hunting and you better get yourself Eric because there is no villager called Eri. So tough luck. So I think the next step here is to give it a little bit more color. What I want to do is I'll go into that background layer and I'm just going to fill it in with that nice yellow that we've been using here. Um, and I think that looks pretty sweet on its own. Um, and of course I want to do some sort of little extra statement, I think, or, or something rather than just Eric, because Eric is fun and all, but you know, I want to do a, a little bit something extra. So I think like a little, maybe like a, just a little tiny circle up here, maybe just a cream circle going over the top of it all could be quite nice. Um, especially if I add like that same kind of like drop shadow that I was doing with uh, the the bigger boy. Uh, and what I can then do now that we have this kind of like extra bubble is put maybe some text inside in a circle. So if you don't know how to do text in a circle in Photoshop, it is very annoying, but it's like the, it, it's, it, this took me so long to figure out and like a solid three YouTube tutorials to really get the hang of. But you create a circle, right? This is so silly. If you create a circle and you get your type tool, you can then build the type around the circle path, right? Just like that. And if you pick the, the, the font that you want, say for example, I want to use Neuer Montreal, um, nice medium and full caps, uh, you can. And then what you can do later is you just hide the circle, right? So it's on that path, it's in the circle, fits all nice and wonderful. Uh, don't even think about asking me how to do it if you want to flip the text so when it goes around the curve, like you know what I mean? Like when it's the inside, when the text is on the inside of the circle, but it's like you can, it's still readable, it's not upside down, you know what I mean? When you want to flip the text in the circle, you get me? It's a uh, weird way of doing it. Uh, there's other tutorials for it, but uh, for now, this is what we'll go with. Um, and let's just change the text to, um, let's do like, uh, most popular or like very popular and for good reason. And there you go. We have like a nice little bit of curved text. Uh, I'm going to add a one point stroke to this as well, just to give it like a cool, just to make it look cooler, to be honest, uh, and, a, and a bit softer. There we go. Um, and I think we have our completed design here for Eric. I think it's a very sweet little design, really showcasing that big, beautiful head of Eric. 
uh, and making him the star of the show. And I think that's just about done. I'm super happy with this one, actually. This one, this one's really quite nice. I like the the structure of it all, and I think it looks pretty cool. So here it is, mocked up in all of its glory. By the way, if you want to get these business card mock-ups, you can. The link is in the description, as well as a billion other assets in the asset pack that it comes with. Uh, so definitely check that out if you want. Very cheap. Mwah, mwah, mwah. But yeah, this is looking sick. So let's move on to our final one for the session, which is the one and only, the wickedly talented Flora. Okay, top three reasons why Flora from Animal Crossing is the best villager of all time. Number one, she shares a birthday with me. That's pretty cool. One of two villagers who shares a birthday with me. And I don't even know who the second one is because I don't care because Flora is number one. Number two, she is a flamingo and her house is a water hole. That's pretty cool. And number three, she is very funny. Has very, very good interactions in the game, I found. Very enjoyable. I actually had her in my first ever island, which is why I want her to return to my new island so bad. Um, and the search for Flora continues over on my Twitch channel. Elliot is a cool guy. You know where it is. This is Flora, and she means everything to me. So the image I've gone with here, as you can see, is just one that I found on the good old Google images. It's a stock photo of Flora just in her natural state. Um, I, the, the, the shirt is pretty cool, um, but I think the main thing, of course, that makes Flora unique is the fact that she is a flamingo in a crowd of ostrich and bird, tall birds. Don't know what the species is called in the game, but a whole bunch of tall birds. She's the only flamingo. Pretty cool. So what I've done here is uh, actually taken Flora's head from her body uh, in, in not a malicious way at all, just because I think it's quite an interesting shape. Don't look to, don't think too much about it. It's just, just you know, it's just the funny shape of the head. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm just going to quickly make this into a smart object. Um, I'm going to add some noise to it, uh, just like about nice, like 10% or so, maybe 10%. Um, please ignore the choppy edges of this as well. Uh, it's not the most high quality image I could find, but it is what it is. We're going to go into images, adjustments, and do threshold. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll just pump that threshold a bit so we get a nice little kind of uh, noisy mesh like that there. So that's pretty cool as it is, right? Okay. But there's more. Let's go into adjustments. Let's go into our gradient map. Uh, and let's use that original color here. And let's find a flora pink. Okay. Let's find a, a hot pink uh, that matches the vibe of Flora, something like that. Uh, this is a bit not, not as nice right now, but that's good. See? See what we did there? Um, so what this does is using the same color as the background as one of the layers in the gradient map means that you're not going to be able to tell the difference between background and foreground, and it's going to give it a cool little effect. And that's looking pretty sick right now, if I do say so myself. Thankfully, it is a gradient map, so if I want to go in and, for example, make this like a black and white image, we can do that. So, learned from my mistakes earlier and made things smart objects pretty cool. So what I'm thinking of doing now is just adding like a huge block of text behind Flora here as the background of the card. Um, now, this isn't something, this is something that I usually do. Okay, I, I, I like to do this quite a lot. Um, and in terms of what I will actually be writing, it's none of your business. I am just gonna start writing and we'll see what we get. Call it stream of consciousness. Okay, so I just wrote a bunch of text and this isn't copy and paste or anything like that. Um, I just start writing and it's just the first thing that comes to my head. And there's probably a few typos in there, but I also reckon I did pretty well. My hands hurt. That hurt a lot from typing. Um, but yeah, uh, there's there's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff in there. Most of it is absolute nonsense, but there's there's definitely some good stuff in there. But I think what this does is, um, I've mentioned it before on one of these videos, but I really like using like text as texture. I think that's an underrated thing to do. And I think when you just kind of like type out a whole bunch of stuff, I'm not intending anyone to read this, right? I don't want anyone to really read it. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not good. Like it's not anything really, I don't think it's, necessarily like a novel ready or anything, right? It's it's very much just for the idea of filling that space which, with some sort of texture. And I think text is a really nice kind of like pattern to it, right? The spacing in between, like when using kind of similar sized words and moving up with different letters and stuff. I, I don't know, it just creates a, a kind of a cool effect and I, I think it really showed here. Um, so the only other thing I want to do for this design is add something maybe like in the bottom right here because I think this is just like this noisy effect. I was looking at this before. This turned out so well. I am genuinely so happy with how the head kind of 
turned out. It's like a like a little ice ice uh, like I see uh, what what do they call those things? A, a snow cone, like a like a snow cone, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so we'll add a new bit of text down here at the bottom. This one's just going to say Flora, um, and we might just put, chuck this either in like Anoya Montreal bold, or we might do it in a script font. So here's what it looks like if we were to do it in like a nice bold font, which looks pretty nice, kind of what you would expect, I think, for a design like this. And then if we take something like Brush Script, for example, which is a classic, um, we can kind of just rotate that up a little bit and chuck it down the bottom there. I personally prefer this. I think that kind of sums up what Flora's vibe is more. Now, this very much looks like, like uh, Tlora rather than Flora, I would say. Um, Brush Script doesn't have the most legible uh, F in the world, but I think it's okay for this design here. Uh, let's add a little bit of a stroke on the main block of text. Just let's see if one pixel kind of looks good. Uh, probably, probably better without it. Uh, let's, let's keep it. Why not? Let's keep it. That's a bit of fun. Disagree with me in the comments if you want. Um, we're going to merge it all together and we'll just add some noise to finish it all off. Uh, about 7%. And there we have it. There is our Flora card, which brings us to our third and final one. Uh, and here is this one, all nicely mocked up on a business card. Very cool. Ooh, awesome. Wow, Elliot, three whole designs. Please do not show my face when I'm saying these parts. My editor probably will do it anyway. Teague's the editor. Messing with me. I can tell. So here are the three completed designs for all of our three villages. And you know what? I'm bloody happy with how they turned out. I'm actually really surprised that they turned out so well. Um, and I credit that to the sweet villages that I got to document. Uh, so shout out to Flora, Eric, and Midge. Especially Flora and Midge, since they look very similar. And I got to use pink, which I don't usually use too much. So that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah. Hopefully you think they're cool as well. If you haven't played Animal Crossing in a while, bloody pick it up because I'm having a ball and you probably will too, especially if it's not winter, which it will be for most of you very soon. Um, God, I hate winter in the game. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, I think these designs turned out really well. If you liked this style of video, please do let me know because I had a lot of fun doing that. Making three designs in the one video was super fun too and hopefully it wasn't too long or anything. But if you stuck around to the end, a big bless to you. Um, but yeah, let me know which villages you would like to see me try and design and we can do that in future videos. A big thank you, of course, to all of my Patreon supporters who gave me a little bit of extra cash to help me make this video happen. Uh, they are all here, as you can see. If you would like to join them to get access to like wallpapers, HD files, exclusive live streams, uh, early access to the videos, custom designs, merch, a whole bunch of stuff. You can get that in the link in the description. Lovely community over there. We have a very good time. Um, but yeah, uh, there's more stuff coming on the channel, more exciting things coming in general uh, that I am very keen to show you all. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Helps a long way and make sure you ring that bell to uh, and feel free to like and comment and do all that nonsense that I just absolutely love reminding you to do. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching the video. Have a good one and I'll see you hopefully next week. Bye!